The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And he said, and as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good evening, everybody. If you've been around for the past week or here or so, you've been seeing construction crews all throughout the campus. We finally began a long-awaited project. We're beginning to, to repair all of the leaks in all of our buildings. All three buildings, by the way, on our campus leak. The rectory, then the office, the church here in sacristy, and the parish hall. And so literally, every time it would rain, and I'm not kidding, I, I literally have a, a water feature in my room that comes down and I had buckets all over the rectory and we run out of buckets to catch all the rainwater. So praise God we finally had a crew come out here and to to begin this this $35,000 project to fix all of our leaky roofs here and so they're finishing up they have to finish up this next week so praise God. $24,000 was covered by insurance and the rest of course on the general parish fund so thank you your hard donation dollars are at work and St. Mary's is now dry. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And thank you for your patience as well. I know we started Mass a little bit late, because I was in the confessional. I was trying to get as many people through as possible, all the way to the last possible minutes. And still, I still had more, more customers in line. But praise God! Especially with Father Reggie away on vacation, is just myself on duty, so I'm trying to get as many people through as possible. Because that is why I exist, right there. Right there. It's to reconcile people back to God. I had this beautiful occasion last night at Kaiser. I was late at Kaiser last night, so I got called there. Somebody was on their deathbed. And praise God, we received a new daughter into the church last night. Somebody who wasn't Catholic their whole lives. But at the moment on their deathbed, they asked for a priest and they wanted to be received into the church. And it was a beautiful occasion. Oh, I I, I live for moments like this. Still fires me up. There There is this woman there in the ICU the breathing tube down her throat, IVs come from every single vein. And I go through the profession of faith. Do you reject Satan? And there I am. I have the book, I'm in the room, surrounded by her family and friends. And of course, she can't say anything because she got that breathing tube down her throat and she simply nods her head. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? She nods her head. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body? And there she is, just nodding her head. And then I prayed over her to confirm her into the church. Oh, I'm telling you, I'd live for these moments. Especially when I confirmed, I said, receive the Holy Spirit. A new daughter of God created yesterday. Reconciled to the church. I don't even know if she's still alive today. Oh, but she lives. You know, we're, we're lucky here at St. Mary's. We have sisters here. Many of you know them. They're from their Pro Ecclesia Santa religious community. They help out on staff and our religious faith formation. One of our newest sisters that just arrived a few months ago, she replaced Sister Laura, if you recall. Sister Laura used to be here for a couple years, and then they sent her to Detroit. <laughs> and then we got a new sister, Sister Claudia, who grew up just here in Dixon, so she's a local girl. And she shared a story with us at our last meeting. Growing up in Dixon when she was 13 years old, get this, she said this to her mom at 13. And everybody in here who's ever raised teenagers will recognize this. She said to her mom, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> you ever heard that from your kids? You're not the boss of me. Where did that come from? Well, because especially at 13, you're trying to guide your children, make them right decisions, but especially as teenagers, rebellious teenagers, what do we do? We get mad at our parents because they tell us to do our homework, to clean our rooms, to come home at a certain hour, not to do this, to do that. And what do we do? We rebel. You're not the boss of me. And now she's a nun. <laughs> Sister Claudia, if you ever see her, ask her about that story. She'll, she'll be embarrassed. We have a rebellious streak in all of us. It's part of our fallen nature we inherited from Adam and Eve. One of the hard parts of being especially in modern age, we tend to separate love from law. You've noticed that about the modern culture. We separate love from law. Oftentimes, one of the, one of the stereotypes people have, especially as Catholics, is what? Oh, you're all about rules. Guilt. And rightly so, we can always be a little too lax or too extreme. Virtue, as we know, is always within the medium. It's always in the middle. Because if we're too worried about the law, then we become what? Scrupulous. But then if you become too blasé about the law, we become psychopaths. Because what is a psychopath? Somebody who feels nothing when they should. And Jesus in that second, in the beautiful gospel, or in the second reading, which speaks about if we love Jesus, we must keep his commandments. You see, where our, our modern tendency is to separate love from law. Oh, I don't have to follow your rules, you Catholic church. Right? You're not the boss of me, right? Wait a minute. If we love Jesus, we follow his commandments. Jesus unites the two, where we have a tendency as modern people to separate the two. And guilt actually in the middle is actually a, a good thing. If I punched you in the face, I should feel guilty because I've done something wrong. If I've skipped Mass so I can go to a football game, I should feel guilty for that, because it's wrong. Jesus says, if, if we say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, we are liars, and the truth is not in us. You see what Jesus is trying to do? He's trying to unite the two. To follow his law is to love. And this is a mark of a maturity of faith, by the way. It's when we follow the rules, and this is what we hope for our teenagers when we hope, hopefully, and it's hard for us to understand when we were kids, because we don't quite understand why our parents try to control us all the time. 
But then as we continue to grow up and we have families of our own, what do we realize? Oh, <laughs> my parents tried to have my highest good in their minds and in their hearts. That is why they told me to clean my room, <laughs> take out the trash, do my homework, not because they were trying to control me, but because of love. What Christianity is at the heart is Jesus attempting to reconcile humanity back to the Father. In the first reading, notice what, from the Acts of the Apostles, notice what Peter says. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. Repent, meaning recognize where we have fallen and bring it to Jesus. There's a word in that other gospel in the second reading today, and the word is expiation. That's a weird word, especially in English, because we don't use that word often, in next, that word expiation. But in the Jewish context, it becomes absolutely clear what John is writing about. The word expiation in Greek is helasmus. And helasmus is directly related to the most pivotal and the most sacred day for the Jewish people, which is called Yom Kippur. In English, that means the Day of Atonement. So understand the words of St. John in the second reading where he says that Jesus is the expiation for our sins. We must first understand the context of Yom Kippur. What, they would do, what the Jewish people would do every year on Yom Kippur, which is the holiest day for them, is that the high priest would go, the high priest would go to the Holy of Holies, and they would take an animal, and they would place that animal upon the altar. And so all the people of Israel would be there in Jerusalem, and this animal would be on the altar, and then the priest, representing the, the whole people of Israel, would place upon the animal all of the sins of the Jewish people upon the animal. So that everybody would have to call to mind all of their sins and their failings. And they would place it on the animal. And then the high priest would slaughter the animal as an expiation for the sins of Israel. That animal would pay the sacrifice well, with its life, would sacrifice its life for the failings of the Jewish people. And then they would take another goat and they would take this other goat and they would put again the same thing, the sins of the, of the Jewish people upon that goat and they would let that goat loose into the wilderness. And this is where we get that famous English phrase scapegoat from. Because we put all of the guilt upon the other goat and we let the goat free where it would come to its demise in the wilderness by other animals. <laughs> The Day of Atonement is a very visceral reality. And so when John now says in the second reading, all of that is in the background. Jesus is the expiation for our sins. Again, why? Part of how we know that God exists, even in non-believers, is that we all recognize, and, and I, I guarantee if I, if I sat down with you and had coffee, and I said to you, tell me your greatest failure, your greatest regret. Everybody in here would immediately know, because we've all done things in our lives that we are all ashamed of. Every single one of us. We've all done something we'd rather not do, have done. And it lingers in our consciousness. We try to forget, it. oh, that wasn't a bad thing, but it still lingers. And it, and it, and it hovers over us like a, a dark cloud. Oh, I'm telling you, it happens all the time, especially in that room when people confess Father has been well, over decades and they'll, they'll bring up something that came up from when they were teenagers and now they're in their 80s. <laughs> and they've been carrying that for decades, for their whole lives. Because that's what, what that voice is. It's the voice of God saying, you've offended me. And it lingers and it lingers. That doesn't quite go away. If you have that, and you have not brought that to confession, that's why I'm here. 
as a priest of Jesus Christ, who now extends this expiation to all of the people that I'm trusted to. But notice in that first reading, what Peter says, says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. You see, it's conditional. That we must bring it to the Lord. Because the other, all, all the other option is, is that we hold on to it. No. Let it go. Bring it to confession. And so if any of you in here have been carrying something from your life all of these years, put it upon Jesus. He is our scapegoat. And remember, this only works if we bring it to him. Let go. Come to confession. That's why I was so happy, and I'll end here, promise, when I was called to Kaiser late last night. But that new daughter of God was received into the church at the very end. She repented. Oh, I imagine she's now in heaven. I mean, we don't know for sure, of course, but our hope is in what Christ has done.